David O'McKay excelled in his schooling, both at the Weber Stake Academy in Ogden, Utah, as well as at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. His love of learning and teaching led him to choose a career in education. During his years as a student, he was active in both schooling and extracurricular endeavors. At the University of Utah, he proved gifted in athletics, music, and debate, was elected class president, and was the valedictorian of his graduating class. At the Weber Stake Academy, he was not only a student, but later a teacher and a principal. A love of teaching and a sharp focus on proper education would permeate the messages of his entire ministry as an apostle and later leader of the church. In 1897, David O'McKay was called to serve a mission in Scotland. While serving in the town of Stirling, David had an experience that would clearly impact his life's work. He and his companion had been unsuccessful in their missionary endeavors. Feeling homesick and ineffective, he and his companion spent a morning walking around nearby Stirling Castle. As they returned to town, they saw an unfinished building set back several yards away from the street. Seeing over the front door an inscription chiseled in the stone arch, David approached the arch to read it. Of this experience, he recorded, When I approached near enough, this message came to me, not only in stone, but as if it came from one in whose service we were engaged. Whate'er thou art, act well thy part. I turned and walked thoughtfully away, and when I reached my companion, I repeated the message to him. That was a message to me that morning, to act my part well as a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It is merely another way of saying, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. The stone inscription seen by Elder McKay is now on exhibit at the Church History Museum, President's Gallery. From Temple Square in Salt Lake City, you are witnessing a part of the proceedings of the 134th Annual Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. President David O. McKay, now in his 91st year, beloved prophet and president of the church, is conducting. The choir will sing, Holy, Holy. Page four. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Some think I'm getting old. Late in his life, President David O. McKay stated, The older I grow, the more grateful I am for my parents, for how they lived the gospel in that old country home. My testimony of the reality of the existence of God dates back to that home when I was a child. When David was eight years of age, his father was called to serve a mission in Scotland. With David's mother, Jeanette McKay, expecting her sixth child, and in consideration of the responsibilities of the farm and home, his father stated, of course it is impossible for me to go. Jeanette read the letter, looked at her husband and replied, of course you must accept. You need not worry about me. As his father served his mission, young David directed his energies toward caring for the family and farm. Such circumstances produced in David O. a maturity beyond his years. In December of 1920, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, David O'McKay was called to serve an unprecedented mission. With church growth across the globe and with the need to dedicate foreign lands to the preaching of the gospel, Elder McKay, along with Hugh J. Cannon, traveled the world, visiting isolated congregations from the Pacific Islands to the Orient, from the Mideast to Europe. The Lord was with Elder McKay throughout the journey. 
testifying of the divine mission he was called to serve. While in China, Elder McKay dedicated the land for the preaching of the gospel. While in the Pacific Islands, he was blessed with the gift of tongues, wherein no interpreter was needed to translate his message. While in Hawaii, standing on a platform of land overlooking an active volcano, he was prompted to move away to safety. Only moments after obeying this prompting, the shelf of earth sank away into the lava below. While in the Holy Land and the Mideast, he prophesied of the last days, the wars to come, and the gathering of the Jews to Israel. This year-long mission gave the young apostle a vision of the worldwide church and a sense of the universality of the message of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. The work of the mission laid the foundation for that which David would shortly accomplish as the president of the European mission. It aided him in establishing the first proselytizing plan of the church, the first mission president seminar, and the establishment of a language training institution. President McKay had a vision of the building of temples around the world. Sensing prophetically the global growth of the church in decades to come, he knew the temples located close to the members would bless the saints in distant congregations. This would enable them to establish and strengthen the stakes, wards, and branches where they lived, thus providing them all the blessings of the gospel without uprooting them from their homes and nations. To meet this need, more temples were built during the administration of David O. McKay than during any previous administration. Under his direction, temples were dedicated in Switzerland, California, New Zealand, and England. During his presidency, when church growth expanded from 1.2 million to nearly 3 million, President McKay encouraged the saints around the world to remain in their homelands, build up Zion where they lived, and promote temple work, missionary work, and gospel instruction in their native language. In 1908, Apostle David O. McKay was called to serve on the Church Correlation Committee. Later, as president of the church, he supported and expanded the role of correlation. The purpose of this principle was explained by Elder Harold B. Lee in General Conference of October 1961. Now this is a move which, as I say, has lain close to President McKay's mind. And now as the president of the church, he is now instructing us to move forward, that we consolidate, we make more efficient and more effective the work of the priesthood, the auxiliaries, and the other units in order that we may conserve our time, our energy, and our efforts towards the prime purpose for which the church itself has been organized. President Joseph Fielding Smith later commented on the success of this endeavor. The work of priesthood correlation and the new emphasis on family home evenings and home teaching brought a great surge of spiritual growth into the church and marked a significant era in the church in strengthening the homes and helping fathers and mothers take their rightful places as spiritual leaders of their children. As a great educator, President McKay bestowed his personal touch on the early stages of this marvelous program. In 1919, as the first church commissioner of education, Elder McKay promoted the expansion of church schools and seminaries and revolutionized gospel instruction. Under his tutelage, instructors were directed to teach with an aim, an illustration, and an application. President David O. McKay taught that our most precious possession is our family, and that home is the chief school of human virtues. Of the home, he declared, Home, its responsibilities, joys, 
sorrows, smiles, tears, hopes, and solicitudes form the chief interest of human life. When one puts business or pleasure above his home, he that moment starts on the downgrade to soul weakness. When the club becomes more attractive to any man than his home, it's time for him to confess in bitter shame that he's failed to measure up to the supreme opportunity of his life and flunked in the final test of true manhood. No other success can compensate for failure in the home. The poorest shack in which love prevails over a united family is of far greater value to God and future humanity than any other rich. In such a home, God can work miracles and will work miracles. Along with the principle that no success can compensate for failure in the home, President McKay sincerely believed and taught that it is possible to make home a bit of heaven. He observed, Indeed, I picture heaven to be a continuation of the ideal home. David O. McKay, as a missionary, apostle, and prophet, encouraged the preaching of the gospel, not only by those called as full-time missionaries, but by all the members of the church. He taught every member a missionary. In General Conference of 1963, President McKay reminded the members of the church of their ability to make a contribution to the missionary work of the church. He stated, Every man, every person who lives in this world yields an influence, whether for good or for evil. It's not what he says alone. It's not alone what he does. It's what he is. Every man, every person radiates what he or she is. And it's what we radiate that affects the people around us. With that same missionary zeal, President McKay declared, And so with you I say, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am looking upon a segment of the Church of Christ who share the responsibility of preaching this gospel to all the world. For we are part of a worldwide organization, and you and I must share part of the responsibility of declaring the gospel to all the world. David O. McKay was a man of great spirituality. Certainly the Lord blessed him with gifts of the Holy Spirit that were manifest often during his ministry. His years of service were replete with examples of the gift of tongues, healings, visions, discernment, wisdom, charity, and revelation. As a man of godly spirituality, he invited all to follow the same path. He taught... Spirituality is the highest acquisition of the soul, the divine in man, the supreme crowning gift that makes him king of all created things. It is the consciousness of victory over self and of communion with the infinite. To acquire more and more power, to feel one's faculties unfolding and one's soul in harmony with God and with the infinite, that is spirituality. Spirituality is manifest in doing, not in dreaming. Rapture is daydreams, flights of heavenly fancy, longings to see the invisible are not so impressive as the plain doing of duty. Every being, doing, and living of good for the very good's sake, that is spiritual. You lose the soul unless you develop spirituality within. No one 
can preside over this church without first being in tune with the head of the church, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our head. This is his church. Without his divine guidance and constant inspiration, we cannot succeed. With his guidance, with his inspiration, we cannot fail. Mm -hmm.